वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला आई एम प्रोफेसर अजमेर सिंह मलिक डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ पब्लिक एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन कुरुक्षेत्र यूनिवर्सिटी कुरुक्षेत्र टुडे वी विल हैव अनदर लेक्चर फॉर यू दैट्स ऑन प्लान फार्मुलेशन एंड इट्स इंप्लीमेंटेशन इन इंडिया द मॉड्यूल और द लेक्चर हैज टू प्रोवाइड द रेलेवेंस स्ट्रक्चर and fundamental aspects of planning in india and our discussion will focus on the context of plan formulation and its implementation especially to uh, to tell you about the need of planning the objective of planning the fundamental of economic policy structure of planning in india and the details of all five year plans with context to periodical re revisions and the changes so in this regard first of all i would like to share with you that planning is a fundamental basis for a nation's development particularly in a country where you don't have enough resources for a large number of people or the we say the huge population and that's also stricken with the poverty there is essentially a need of planning the basis of planning is a natural and inevitable process the reason being if we don't use our resources in an effective and efficient or systematic manner then it may not be possible to cater the base even the basic needs of the population therefore there may be and uh, in other words we can say there are different kinds of needs or why we need planning there are different region and there there are different perspective of those needs these are there may be there may be economic perspective that our country is facing acute problem of poverty about 30% of population are under poverty line there are social perspective also generally our society believes in traditional system traditional lifestyles we have not been modern in our outlook and that's why we have to bring a social change or the social development that's why the planning requires the planning is having a social perspective also you may have seen that in our society past particularly there are gender discrimination there are caste based discriminations there are religious kind of uh, distinctions among of the people uh, among the people and that's why there are social uh, that that carries the social perspective of planning we again i am reemphasizing it that there is a need for the social progress social change for social development the third perspective is called the political perspective and that political perspective means that polity particularly for establishing the democracy in society for building up the nations and other things relating to that aspect the planning requires that we may be able to build up we we will be able to bring in nation, nation building we will be able to strengthen our democracy we will be able to uh, we ensure participation of the people in the political process that's a very important we call it the political development and the planning may be by the socio economic the other perspective by the socio economic perspective or you call it socio economic and political perspective in a com combined sense and in total we want to develop our society and that that is having both and the three things social economic and political change in the society and that's why planning is also having three perspective then as india becomes more concerned about the uh, about its development after independence or we say the when we we were fighting the uh, struggle for our independence that there were some people particularly during 1930s and uh, thereafter that we were concerned that 
how we 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 educate or how we ensure progress of our society some of the visionary they they they, they laid down certain pathways and they emphasized there is a need of planning in india not only that when the progress or social socio economic progress made in russia erstwhile russia that has motivated our leaders to and to have some sort of planning in the country as an initial step taken in our country that is the formation of national planning committee under the chairmanship of pandit jawahar lal nehru in the real sense it was uh, it was uh, it was pandit jawahar lal nehru who was who was fascinated with the planning who was fascinated with the progress made in uh, astral russia and that's why uh, by the then president uh, under the chairmanship of uh, under the presidentship of the uh, then president sri subhash chandra bose in 1938 this committee was constituted under the uh, under the chairmanship of uh, uh, pandit jawahar lal nehru and there are certain uh, some some very well known industrialists in india uh, that is uh, they come together and that uh, those were set up uh, and that is that uh, when they come together that plan is known as bombay plan in 1944 and that that bombay plan projected economic development through the active role of state machinery and that requires they emphasize the need of planning in india in 1950 as a result of all these developments there are other development also and uh, along with this bombay plan and uh, national uh, planning committee that ultimately we got independence and in 1950 we established the planning commission by an order by an executive order the plan uh, the planning commission proposed to be established in 1950 that was uh, uh, that uh, that proposed that the planning will be undertaken through the strategic framework of five year plans this strategic framework which has been followed since then has flexibility and scope for directional change and focused reorientation again i would like to emphasize that that when we established planning commission which was headed by the prime minister at that time nehru and uh, naturally uh, certain members were inducted in it cabinet ministers were they were there and uh, uh, that planning commission was uh, uh, was interested with the job to to check out or to frame five year plans for the social and socio economic development of the country it identified certain areas uh, of development and as a result of that and uh, uh, with, with this, this purpose we developed an institutional framework in the subsequent years no doubt at this present time planning commission is not there but since uh since 1950 to uh 1950 to the present century about for about 60 years and more we d- we we undertook or we we have been engaged with the five year plans 12 five year plans and that's why it is relevant to discuss how the planning commission and the different institution associated with the planning commissions have been able to formulate have been successfully formulated the plans and implemented those plans particularly if you see in the in the industrial policy orientation since 1956 that is the industrial policy resolution 1956 that was associated with the state controlling or production and industrial development till 1990s or you can say in 1991 when we uh, when we opened our economy that is we liberalized our economy we globalized our economy and prioritized the development of the country only then up to then the state has been in a controlling position position to direct the economic social and economic development of the country and that social and economic development of the country was designed as well as directed by the planning commission in association with the national development council uh, so therefore 
keeping in view the fact that the planning commission has been uh, has been in the steering role for the development of the country therefore we will discuss about its structure how it is it was composed of normally if you say that prime minister was the chairman of this planning commission and uh, since its in inception since 1950 the commission normally comprises of some members and uh, the number of members that varied from one commission to another commission first of all it has been a history although it has been a history but it has been uh, a unique feature that uh, most of the time not all if not always most of the time the deputy ch chairman of the commission was appointed by the personal wishes as per the personal wishes of the prime minister no doubt prime minister was the chairman the deputy chairman was in real sense the executive officer or the main uh, main guiding force for the planning commission there was a ministry of planning when ministry of planning was established then cabinet rank minister minister of uh, minister of planning he has uh, he has remained as a permanent member of the planning commission similarly ministry of finance or finance minister has always been the member of the planning commission the reason being the resources required for the implementation of planning has to come through the finance ministry that, that's why another important minister that is the minister of defense he has also been the member of the planning commission besides these commissions there have been certain experts or people having experience in different walk of life or different areas or the sectors of economy which requires some sort of state directions or government directions and control uh, uh, that is uh, development in that particular area requires a state control those have been uh, those were appointed in the similar way like we have uh, other institutions constitutional and non constitutional the members of the planning commissions were both as part time also as well as the full time members were there and uh, naturally that has played an important role and that has been uh, that that has been considered one of the uh, one of the reason one of the factors which 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 made the planning commission a successful one at least during the years we need it most and that's why and the reason is why i'm saying like that that after economic liberalization the role of the planning commission has become a limited one because the development is not now state controlled rather it is it is as per it is an indicative kind of the planning that's why the role has been limited one and what the, what are the roles and functions of this commission this is an again an important aspect the first of all we are listing some of the important areas or important role and functions which a planning commission supposed uh, which planning commission performed uh, performed during the period it has it has it has been uh, in control of uh, planning in control of planning for all of the econo social and economic development the first one is that it undertook the resource it 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 undertook the analysis of the resources which means that the actual analysis of all the resources with the perspective of assessment of capacity and potential means what kind of resources are available within the country the physical human and financial one that is uh, that has been undertaken by the planning commission and it's it's an important being then the second is the analysis that the second role is perform second role is that the analysis of resource augmentation possibilities with the back uh, with the backdrop of need for the same means how to enrich our uh, how to enrich our resources human physical all along all uh, uh, both of them and the third is the formulation of plans five year plans prospective plans although we are aware of most of us are aware of the a five year plans otherwise the planning commission was also interested with the prospective planning or the long term planning whatever you can say even 
the five year plans which were formulated by the planning commission which were used to be formulated by the planning commissions those 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 were divided into different annual plans also resource allocation financial and other all these things and the different steps involved in the implementation of planning on annual basis and periodical review all is a, uh, all of those are a part of the uh, formulation of plan then fourth uh, we can say enumerating and structuring the priority of the plan to need and resources as resource assessment enumeration and structuring of the priority that is that is very important because it is it is undertaken through the political process and uh, what the uh, and that's why the political process which which assess that what is what is required or what what should have uh, what kind of priority has to be assessed to which area or which sector of economy that is to be assessed no doubt uh, that is uh, that is in a political political process and one important institution national development council our referred it earlier also national development council which is not only the approval uh, uh, which not only the agents uh, not only uh, the approving agency of the five year plans and annual plans but that has also been composed of the chief ministers and the important ministers and headed by the prime minister that has become a deliberation platform to 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 uh, to determine the priorities of the countries or to determine the development priorities of the country that is also performed by this uh, this planning commission then defining of the plan implementation stages and the processes this is again a very important aspect although i have referred it earlier also when i stated that uh, five year plans are uh, are composed of the five annual plans and all those things but here i would like to refer some of the other things the planning process or the planning institutional framework in india which was created over the years after 1950 not only consist of the planning commissions and thereafter in 1952 the establishment of the national development council so as to give and so as to accord the political uh, pol political patronage or the political support rather i would like to say the political support to the planning process but there are other institutions uh, there there were there are other institutions uh, also which were created during 1960s and thereafter particularly if you see that at the state level uh, the uh, state planning boards were established similarly the state planning department were established not only that one economic and statistical area organization for making the assessment of the resources available in that state and to identify the priorities those were also established at the district level also statistical department were established not only the statistical uh, department but lately 92 and onwards and even before that we discussed about the district development council and district planning committee or district planning process and the sub district planning process also nowadays we also talk about the village level planning although it was not there at the time it was after the post liberalization it, it is in the after the post liberalization era that we established these institutions and made them more effective it, these district level and sub district level agencies were not as effective as these are nowadays but that uh, those agency all these agencies district level agencies state level agencies and the central government level agencies those were uh the, those those, uh, those agency collaborated their efforts coordinated their activities in such a manner so that they can devise the plan in such a systematic manner and uh, so that it may be implemented in a right perspective and it may be divided into the different stages and the process for each and every kind of the process relating to planning that could be charted out not only for the planning purpose rather for implementation of that one and that's why there is another impact and another important thing is which is associated with all these institutions which and uh, the communication in between these uh, communication channels in between these institution among these institutions that is to identify the barriers uh, to identify the barriers in the plan implementation and how those barriers can be removed or can be utilized as enablers for the 
uh, social and economic development of the country. Natural from the uh, from the from the development efforts or the development um, uh, from the process of the economic development when we are implementing the plans that helps and uh, that uh, that their strengthening of uh, those enablers through appropriate process and the resource augmentation that may help it help in achieving the desired goals. I would like to tell you here, although I will discuss in later on also that most of the times what we expected, most of the times, not always, most of the times what we expected or what whatever the, our targets have been, those could not be achieved because of those barriers. And that's why it, it is considered very important that the barriers may be removed and enablers which facilitate the implementation of plan that must be that must be strengthened so that we may able to get uh, maybe we, we may be able to achieve the targets set, uh, set set up for the annual plans as well as five year plans and uh, that is and how to remove them how to remove those things within a stipulated time this requires a proper understanding proper assessment and the uh, naturally adequate and very specific kind of the solutions to remove all those things. Allocating human resources and de determining the organizational structure for plan implementation, that has been considered a very important aspect of the planning process and that has been considered as a process where we can remove the obstructions and utilize, utilize all those organizations or all those uh, structures and the human resources as an enabler so that we can, we may be able to get uh, the results or we may be able to get the objectives fulfilled. And in another way we can say ki while implementing the plan while at the implementation stage of the plan we can reanalyze our policy, reanalyze our plans, the periodic revisions that is an important aspect. Earlier there used to be a midterm appraisal of the five year plans that is after two and a half years we uh, we, we used to uh, assess it but the process of uh, uh, analysis analyzing what we have done what we have not been able to do during the plan period uh, that that is that was a lengthy process and by the time that uh, that uh, midterm appraisal was there already most of the plan period were uh, was uh, was over and as a result of that we could utilize we could utilize the uh, we, we could utilize uh, the findings of the midterm appraisal on in the next plan but whatever it is uh, that uh, since uh, planning process and this country is uh, country is so big and the development process itself is a complex one and that's why it may not be possible to have a very systematic and very uh, we can say specific kind of solutions for each and every kind of the system or we may not be able to diagnose it while uh, while while implementing it no doubt uh, the process of the monitoring and evaluation that's a continuous process that was utilized but it uh, that 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 was undertaken but not properly utilized particularly at the time of the plan is implemented it was rectified rectified in the subsequent annual plans or in subsequent five-year plans. Then another important thing is uh, that uh, the recommendation made, uh, made uh, as a result of those evaluations and whenever it is required that is that is based on the feedback and the monitoring uh, monitoring process of the plan implementation that's an important area and uh, that has been. Now before we discuss the five different five-year plans I would like to tell one important thing that as I have told you, there are different level of institutions. What the uh, the five-year plans have been undertaken in the uh, different areas which uh, states suppose or uh, the, which the government supposed to undertake those activities in those particular field. And uh, 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 that efforts have been made that uh, what are, whatever the priorities of the first five-year plan 1951 to 1956. The first five-year plan, uh, naturally, it was the brainchild of uh, Pandit Nehru. And uh, the primary aim of the first five-year plan was to improve living standard of the people of India. At that time, 
the major objective was that is how to improve the living standard of the people uh, of India and this could be done uh, yeah, it was thought in the five year plan document that this could be done by making judicious use of India's natural resources and an outlay with a, with a meager outlay at the time the cost the uh, that uh, and that uh, we, di we didn't have much resources or plenty of resources with us and that's why we started with rupees 2069 crores the second five year plan uh, not second five year plan but in the first five year plan the focus was on industrial sector energy uh, irrigation transport communication social services development of agriculture and community miscellaneous issues and uh, you will be surprised to know that uh, we were expecting that the growth rate will be 2.1 percent uh, every year that was this was again a small we expected only a small growth because we started from zero and at that time it was difficult to achieve with the meager resources and meager understanding and at the time we were not having and the adequate organizational setup for the implementation of the five-year plans and as a but uh, but we, we could grow at the rate of 3.6 percent per annum and this has this is clear indication of the success of the first five year plan or you can say that we, we can rate it and there are such an important achievement during that that is uh, Metro Dam, Hirakun Dam, Bakra Dam those were, rest, those were constructed during that uh, period and the particularly agriculture as a result of this uh, that agriculture got uh, some, some strength and uh, the landless workers also got employment out of these activities. Not only this one, the cooperative institutions were uh, also set up so as to promote the economic development and so as to engage the people around us in the economic development process of the country. The second plan, five-year plan that was during 1956 to 1960, one that focused on industry, especially heavy industry, and uh, uh, we say since and uh, I say this is uh, the plan followed the very uh, we say Mahalnavis model of economic development, and uh, in real sense it is uh, Indian statistician Prasanta Chandra Mohan Wallace uh, who 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 who. who who has given this model of development for the India and as a result of that uh, the physical and trust, uh, infrastructures uh, we say uh, that is the hydroelectric projects etc steel steel plants particularly at Bilai, Durga and Raurkela and coal production was increased uh, the steel plants were established and coal production was increased moreover uh, railway network was added to the northeast of our country. This is an important one. And the focus was uh, on the, uh, uh, there is another institution which was set up during this area, period was the Atomic Energy Commission which was set up in 1958. Uh, and uh, uh, then another important thing is uh, that uh, focus was there on power and irrigation, social services, communication and transport and uh, the growth target was 4.5 percent although we could achieve uh, we, we could achieve only uh, 4 percent and uh, uh, the five-year plans allocation uh, was made uh, that was 4800 that's a, it multiplied at least uh, four times from the earlier plans then the third plans that is in between 1961 and 66 uh, that uh, it's stressed on the ag agriculture and improvement in the productions of wheat particularly and uh, it uh, it was plagued by two wars sino indian wars uh, sino indian war of 1962 and indian pakistan war on nine, in 1965 66 and the focus was on price stabilization because there was problem relating to it there was a scarcity of food and uh, uh, we say there the constructions of dams were also uh, emphasized or uh, we say that uh, investment by the government was made on the construct of dam also and many steel plants again infrastructure industries were set up during this period and uh, education was also 
find an important place or education, particularly primary education, uh, in the form of opening schools, primary schools in rural area. That that also uh, that uh, that was also given priority during this plan. And uh, this period also witnessed a democratic decentralization, although it was not in that way, but we can say that panchayats were established uh, as to ensure uh, political participation in the development process. Not only that one, the state electricity board and secondary education boards, both for education and as well as electricity promotion, those were added during the plan. Target was 5.6 percent, but actually growth it was 2.4 percent, and then it clearly indicate uh, that uh, the war uh, that those have been that we could not make much progress during this period. Then the fourth plan was during the 1969-74, and uh, uh, this witnessed 1969 that uh, nationalization of banking 14. Uh, 14, 14 major Indian banks were nationalized. Green revolutions was introduced during this period. Funds were earmarked for the industrial development. And uh, we say, but there is another war, Indo-Pak war, uh, particularly Pak uh, we call it the Bangladesh Liberation War of 1971. Uh, that is another important uh, uh, event during this plan. and. Uh, the one important thing is uh, what we did in this case that in 1974, if you remember, that we could undertake uh, that uh, uh, that uh, uh, nuclear explosion uh, that is uh, in the Bay of Bengal, uh, with, uh, not a nuclear explosion, and that was in response to the um, uh, that is uh, deployment of Seventh Fleet in the Bay of Bengal. The reason being at that time also security concerns were very very important and that's why we could do it and the things were or the uh, resources were diverted for another kind of the purpose that's a security and our targeted growth of 5.7 percent that could not take place it 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 could we could reach we could attain only 3.3 percent of growth during this period. Then fifth five-year plan that was again not a very, uh, we say, a successful story. Although the growth threat was five percent against the target of the four point five percent. In another way, we can say, uh, in another way, we can say that we could, we could attain more than we targeted, but in real sense during this period. Uh, stress was laid on the employment, poverty elevation programs, and social justice, etc. Pla plan focused on the self-reliance in agriculture production, and the results of the green rev revelations were uh, visible in our economy. But uh, we say uh, there is a change in the political guard uh, guardship, and as a result of that, the model of development has changed from one system to another system. That is. But uh, uh, this period is considered an important in the sense that Electricity Supply Act was enacted in 1975 and uh, we say national highway system was established during that period. Moreover, this plan period also witnessed the development of the tourism in the country or we can say that focus or attention was given to the tourism, uh, tourism uh, areas where we could provide more employment and a more uh, opportunity for the economic development. Then sixth five-year plans again. It started with 1980. In the 80s, it was during the periods of 1980, 1985. It was again when Congress government came to powers again that that the government reassessed its uh, economic uh, economic system, and as a result of that, uh, <coughs> that uh, uh, sometimes the Later on, the people said that it was the beginning of the economic liberalization. The how, we don't know, or we can't comment in the right way because we don't have evidences like that. But the price controls were eliminated for the first time. Russian shops were closed for, uh, Russian shops were closed. And this led to the increase in the price rise, particularly food price rise, increase in the cost of living. This was the end of the Nehruvian socialism and the 
socialism or the socialistic pattern of society that has uh, a Nehruvian socialism uh, that was in real sense replaced by the Rajiv Gandhi's philosophy of of liberalizing or of decontrolling some of the activities of the development. Family planning was an important issue. China's, uh, that is we say, uh, China's policy of one, one child uh, policy that could not be implemented, although the discussion was there, but family planning or family, which we call it nowadays family welfare, that has remained an important issue. The sixth five-year plans was considered as a great success in the sense that we were having we targeted the growth at 5.2 percent and actual growth is uh, growth uh, we attained during that period was 5.4. In case of earlier plan, in real sense, although we achieved more than the targeted one, but the targets were quite low, keeping in view a large country and the increasing uh, population, keeping in view the needs of the increasing uh, num increasing population in the country. The seventh five-year plan, that's uh, 1985 to 1990, that marked the comeback of Congress party to power and it improved the productivity level of uh, industries by upgrading the technology and the objective of the five-year plan, the seventh five-year plan was to establish growth in areas of increasing economic productivity, production of food grains and generating employment. So, uh, the important issues which were there, social justice, removal of oppression of the weak, weak people or we say uh, the weaker section of society, using modern technology was emphasized, agriculture development and anti-poverty programs got the priority during this plan period. Then uh, during the eighth five-year plan, that is uh, 1992 to 1997, modernization of industry was a major highlight of the eighth plan. Under this plan, the gradual opening of Indian economy was undertaken to correct the bourgeoising deficit and foreign debt. Uh, India became member of the World Trade Organization in the year 1955 and uh, uh, it is considered an era where the uh, we say Narsimha Rao's and Manmohan Singh uh, model of economic development was introduced through the um, economic liberalization, privatization and globalization. And as a result of that many, uh, we say many kind of the reforms were introduced. Uh, most of the time we could say that a 5% per annum growth was expected on a, and I uh, would say and it is considered that to to have 5.6 percent of the growth, it is essential that we make an investment of about 23.2 percent of the gross domestic product. That that is the highlight. Or in another way, we can say that uh, we could uh, uh, that realistic plan formulation and a change in economic development and the privatize as a result of the privatization that five year plans have become now going to be indicative planning in the country and uh, i would say that's why this is considered one of the important or the impact of the rao and manmohan singh model of economic growth next next plan was ninth five year plan 1997 to 2002 and uh, uh, that uh, the objective was that was the speedy industrialization. I'm emphasizing the word speedy industrialization and a speedy human development, full scale employment, poverty reduction, and self reliance on domestic resources. This has been the main concern of the ninth five year plans. Priority was given to agriculture sector, emphasis was on rural development, adequate employment opportunities, and promoting. A rural uh, promoting the programs for removing uh, programs for the reduction of poverty that were emphasized. And efforts have also been made uh, to stabilize the prices and so as to accelerate the growth rate of economy. This is another important thing. And uh, there is another important thing which was which was the concern which was for concern for the country that we wanted to ensure food and nutritional security in India. 
Not only this one, they, there was an urgent need for uh, for the infrastructure development, particularly in the area of uh, uh, in the area of education, in the area of drinking water facility, in the area of primary health, transport, and energy. These were the areas which were of main concern during this plan, and this is naturally the demand for such kinds of the activities that has increased manifold because of the increasing population in that country, and the. The issues, social issues particularly, which got, although social issues were not ignored, those were taken since the days of, uh, since the beginning of the planning. But here again, we emphasized social issues particularly like women empowerment, conservation of uh, certain benefits for this special group of the society, and to create a liberal market for increase in the private industry aspect. And naturally, uh, the um, since it was a liberal economy, that's why initiative to to attract private investment that was also undertaken during the plan. During the plan period, the re growth rate was uh, targeted as 5.35 percent, and a percentage of point uh, we say uh, percentage point, which is uh, a percentage point lower than the target GDP growth of 6.5 uh, percent. Again, um, and growth rate was. 5.35 percent. Um, the tenth uh, five-year plan that was from 2002 to 2007, we uh, escalated or increased our GDP target of the GDP that was uh, to 8 percent, and uh, reduction of poverty by 5 percentage point was targeted. Again, full and high-quality employment was emphasized. Gender gaps in illiteracy; those were emphasized because the literacy rate among the girls, in comparison to boys, that was quite alarming. One twenty-point point program was introduced during this this plan period, and we could. But uh, despite the fact that uh, uh, about eight percent of the growth rate was tar targeted, we could achieve only seven point seven percent. And the eleventh five-year plan. Again, objective are the almost in the same way, but here that is how to raise the income, how to remove, reduce the poverty, how to accelerate the GDP from eight percent to ten percent, and then to maintain it ten percent in the twelfth plan. Those were the real. Although at that time also it was considered these may not be realistic, but there was boom in economy. Everything was going smoothly, and we were progressing, and that's why. Uh, that uh, we 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 raised our target from eight percent to ten percent. Agriculture GDP growth was uh, also targeted at a very high rate, that is four percent per uh, per 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 year, to ensure a broader uh, spread of benefits. Means uh, most of the population in India is dependent on agriculture, and if we increase. Uh, the growth rate of agriculture naturally it is likely to benefit all or larger section of population. Particularly, we were uh, concerned that uh, we will uh, we will be able to create uh, 70 million new work opportunity and we will be able to reduce 5 percent uh, 5 percent uh, uh, unemployment among the educated youth and. Uh, uh, we, we 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 targeted to increase the wage employment etc. And to reduce the head count of the consumption by 10 percent, etc. The 11th five-year plan and 12th five-year plan, both of the both of the, these plans emphasized on certain important sector of economy or sector, and both are which is related to the education, health, education, health, women and children, and physical infrastructure essential for the development of the country. And naturally, we made uh, we made uh, naturally we made the arrangements for the investment. And uh, we say there is another important aspect is uh, housing, etc. That has also been made important one. But during the twelfth five-year plan, when it was implemented, uh, that is from two zero twelve to two zero seventeen, there is a change in the guardship again at the government of India level. The BJP came to the power, and at that time, during the Congress regime also, and and that the relevance of the planning commission or planning system that was questioned, 
because it has been alleged that the planning commissions and the planning institution has become the department and a controversy or the conflict it was there between the planning commission and the finance commission as a result of that the new government after coming to power it replaced the planning commissions with the niti ayog and with the about niti ayog we will discuss in another another lecture we will discuss about the niti ayog how it has replaced and what are the functions entrusted to this niti ayog that you will be able to learn from the from another lecture uh, on the topic therefore for the for the uh, for the planning system, planning process which is which is here although we have the planning institutions still we have the planning institutions except planning commission national development council is there state planning departments are there and but we changed the system of funding the development whatever development is within the control of the state we have devised many new kinds of the strategy by privatizing it by public private partnership is there and again uh, we are also uh, implementing the development programs through the civic societies and contracting out there are so many things of the economic uh, that in the era of economic liberalization therefore uh, i uh, just since it has played an important role that's why this lecture is also equally important as an institution because it brought lot of econo social and economic development for the country that's all for today thank you very much for being with us thanks